I realized that the so-called PA grassroots organizations are not always so innocent. A few residents, including those I have met in Aljune GRC, do work to engage the community for no political reason, but simply to look out for their neighbors and friends. But when the Aljune GRC MPs took over in 2011, the first welcome gift from the PAP was the transfer of 26 community sites where Aljune residents gather and bond, transferred from the town council to the People's Association. The seven RC committee members, the, I beg your pardon, the seven RC committees in UNOS received a directive from someone, I don't know who, not to engage with the incoming Workers' Party Town Council. So, for example, in the past, when RC members would assist the incumbent Town Council to look out for community issues such as declining standards of cleanliness, faulty lights and so forth, the RCs now disengaged from the new town council, and they just kept quiet. Some residents shared with me that there were a handful of mischievous RC members who went further. Instead of alerting the town council to community issues, they used the opportunity to badmouth the Workers' Party town council. And after 2011, the RCs in UNOS, through the UNOS Community Club, would send requests to AHPETC to use the HDB void decks for RC activities, which I saw no reason to deny the RCs usage of. If they wanted to organize a durian party for residents, I thought, we live in a democracy, and I would want them to treat any opposition party the same way. So go ahead. But in carrying out their durian party or any other activity, they would not forget to invite both the PAP branch chairman and grassroots advisor to mingle with residents. When I asked to be allowed to use a facility managed by the PA in my ward, the reply from the CCC chairman was, a polite no. This is the simple reality of the People's Association in Opposition Wards, an organization that is supposed, supposedly exists to encourage greater communal harmony in our community. This caused me to think hard what the PAP government means when it wishes for an inclusive Singapore and what a hollow an insincere call it is in view of the structure of our grassroots organizations. Now, the CCC sits at the top of all grassroots organizations in Singapore. And in this age of information, it is one of the most mysterious organizations in Singapore. Many Singaporeans will not be able to tell you who the CCC chairman of their ward is. Do you know your CCC chairman? So who appoints the CCC and RC chairman in your ward? Well, they are appointed by the PAP MP or losing PAP candidate in the constituency. The Straits Times previously interviewed several PA grassroots leaders and advisors who said, that when they organize activities for residents, they also hope to win political mileage for the PAP MP, and by extension, the PAP. And when they realize that there are opposition supporters in the CCC, these individuals are told to leave. One CCC chairman went even further to say that he expects his CCC members to join the PAP, and he wants an explanation if they refuse. And he shamelessly went ahead to say that the CCC is, and I quote, a voluntary organization for the PAP, unquote. Now, now if that was the case, 
Why call it the Citizens Consultative Committee? Just call it the PAP Consultative Committee. If you think grassroots equals PAP grassroots only, and that is an insult on our democracy and the values professed in our pledge and flag, there is an even greater problem I have to share with you. These organizations like the CCC, which use community work and communal harmony, while also openly doing the PAP's political bidding, are funded by yours and my taxpayer money. In 2012, thanks to a parliamentary question filed by the MP for Haugang, Mr. Peng Ying Huat, it was revealed that each of the 87, I, bet I say again, each of the 87 CCCs in Singapore were given on average $150,000 per year from 2005 to 2011. And each of the 567 RCs received about $9,500 per year. Now you may understand part of the reason why the PA's budget has recently been increased to $1 billion. One, one very innocent RC member in UNOS asked me, why the Workers' Party did not organize more activities in the CC for residents? When I sat her down and told her, that the CC is not open to opposition MPs for community purpose and our community organizations do not receive any funding from the PA, she almost embarrassingly looked away from me. I told her that as long as she focused on serving the community and her neighbors and worked with whichever team was elected by the people, she should not be embarrassed about anything. She looked at me and said, but Mr. Singh, this is so unfair. And then she said, now I know why we need an opposition. Well, if your precinct is not selected or eligible for the HDB Neighbourhood Renewal Programme or NRP, the money is likely to come from the Community Improvement Projects Committee or CIPC, which comes under the Ministry of National Development. And who sits on the CIPC committee in MND? Well, they are PAP MPs and grassroots advisors. The CIPC disburses its funds by virtue of the CCC's recommendations, which I spoke about earlier. Unsurprisingly, an elected opposition MP has no say prioritizing projects in the constituency. And the PAP supporters then ask, why the opposition cannot do what the PAP MPs do? Well, that's because the CCC chairman is the boss. And that also partly explains why many PAP backbencher MPs can afford to continue in their high-paying jobs in the private sector and be absent from parliament and continue holding their many directorships because they leave the groundwork to the CCC and RC chairman. Now each year, MND sets aside about $40 million of its budget for CIPC projects that are executed through the various town councils. And I found out that in the year 2009, 2010, and 2011, three consecutive years prior to the general elections in 2011, the Aljunit Town Council under the PAP was allocated about $4 million each year from the CIPC committee, a total of $12 million over three years. On a per year basis, that's about 10% of the entire CIPC budget of MND per year. Now, I don't know why they receive such a large share of the budget considering there are other PAP town councils in Singapore, but I suspect it could have something to do with supporting the PAP team in Aljunit GRC. For your information, from 2011 to 2015, AHPETC has received nothing. Since 2012, I have repeatedly asked the CCCs in Aljunit to support new improvement projects. After 18 months of trying, we finally managed to get some projects approved. We proposed about 50 projects, and about 17 were approved in 2013. 